All right, so let's go ahead and use Logic Pro to understand how an MCR instruction works. And these are basically pretty straightforward, but there are a couple of things that I want you to notice about it, okay? So first things first, um, let's go ahead. Um, we'll go ahead and start off. We're going to use the IO simulator here, all right? And I've already identified a basic start-stop station using my first two uh, inputs. And I'm using a B3 here to go to a line where I will put my MCR in a minute. But I want to explain how my, out, my inputs and outputs work right now. So I have four inputs tied directly to a corresponding output. And how I set this up was two, input two goes to output two. Three to three, four to four, five to five, okay? So let me show you first where the MCR instruction is located in this program and in RS Logix 500. So if I can move this over to program controls, that's where you will find the MCR. So it's an output instruction. So I'm gonna grab this, drag it down. Now the MCR is one of the very few output instructions that does not require in an address, okay? And so um, if you have one, you should always have another one showing you where it ends. So what this does is this input will turn on the MCR. The MCR has to know where to end and you'll see why here in a little bit. So I'm gonna come down to six and I'm gonna select MCR again. Now the MCR should not have any inputs underneath it or in front of it, okay? So I'm gonna go ahead and download this and then see how all right, so let's go ahead and see how it works. So we're gonna download this. So I come over here to uh, bring this up to my controls, download. I'm gonna come over here and select run. Now, if I come over and I activate two, three, four, and five, notice none of my outputs are activating, okay? So let me come over here, activate the start. Now I have turned on my MCR. So my active is actually going and both are active. So come over here, 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 here. Now they are all activating and I can shut them off pretty easily too. Okay. All right. And so this MCR acts like a master control reset. Okay. So, or relay, however you want to identify it. So now let me go ahead um, and I'm going to make a small modification to show you what the, the idea of the MCR is. All right, so um, I'm going to come here. I've All I've done is moved my MCR up and I've taken five and six or well input four uh, that's tied to output four, five that's tied to five, and I've taken them outside of my MCR zone. Okay, so I'm going to download this, put it into run mode. So let's go ahead and see what happens when these are outside of the MCR zone. So now two and three are still working because my MC, my, it's active. So when I disengage that, this turns off. Okay, and these aren't, these, these have turned off. And now if I activate four and five, they are running even though my MCR is off because they are outside of the zone. All right, it's just two and three. And that's how you use an MCR. Now, a common question that comes up is, can I use multiple MCRs? I have never done that before. I don't recommend people to do it. What we have to understand is this MCR is looking to end. Okay, it's looking to finish. If you have multiple MCRs, you can create some scan time issues that are really tough to overcome. There are other more eloquent ways if you need to block off things like subroutines, maybe a jump routine, something like that. I think the idea of just jumping right to putting multiple uh, MCRs in there, I, I can see the appeal of it, but it's not something that I would recommend. The MCR is a very powerful, very useful instruction, and uh, I highly recommend using it uh, You know, on a lot of programs. There's not a lot of reasons why you wouldn't put it in there to be able to shut everything off at once. All right, so I hope this video helped. Thanks.